Hey guys, welcome back to my small engine repair channel. Today I've got a Craftsman snowblower right behind me here. It's made by MTD. It's got an issue with the chute tilt function. So this machine has an electric chute. It turns sideways electrically and the tilt as well is powered by a motor as well. So the customer is having an issue with the chute tilt. It won't go up and down. I'm going to show you two ways on how to repair this. There's a $5 way to repair it or the other way is over $100. I'm gonna show you both options and I'll let you know which option the customer went for. And you'll see a step-by-step -step video on how to do this yourself at home. And here's the machine. It's a Craftsman made by MTD. So if your machine looks identical to this, but it's branded differently, for example, MTD, Cub Cadet, Yardworks, etc., and you have the thumb switch right here for the chute, then this repair will apply to you as well. So what I'm going to do here is start up the machine and show you exactly what is not going on. And what you will see is that the chute tilt here, this part over here, does not go up and down. The chute moves sideways, but that doesn't work. Okay, so you clearly saw there that when I moved the switch up and down like that, the chute tilt wasn't moving. When I was moving it side to side, you could see that the chute was actually moving. So the side to side works, the tilt does not work. If you have this issue, what you need to do is to replace this switch here. Now, when you buy this switch, you get all the wiring harnesses and everything that goes with it. And that's the repair that will cost you over $100 here in Canada. The $5 option is as simple as this, a carriage bolt and a knob. All you have to do is remove this bolt here. And it's literally just a two minute job. Now, by the way, you can actually keep the bolt that's already there and just get a knob that is 5 16 inside diameter threads. Then you put this on. And then when you tighten up the knob, the chute tilt will lock in a position that you want you can stop and move it and you can actually move the chute tilt retighten the knob and it will stay where you want it now the only inconvenience of this is you cannot do this right from the console of the snowblower you actually have to stop what you're doing come to the chute and move the chute tilt in whatever direction you want but for a five dollar repair compared to a repair that's over 100 bucks it's a cheap option. Some people cannot afford to spend the money to fix the switch, so they have this option. So my customer has opted to go with the more expensive repair, and that is to replace the switch and the whole harness that comes with it. This all comes as one part. Okay, so here's the part number for the switch assembly. It's part number 925-06247. And I also ordered the bottom cover of the switch because it's broken right here. And here's the new cover. That part is part number 73108876. Now all the links to these parts will be in the video description. So now to get in the repair, what we need to do is remove the switch and the harness. So the first thing I will start by is removing the bolt right here. And this will be a 10 millimeter head bolt. The next thing I'm going to do is cut off all the tie wraps holding the harness to the handlebars. And you'll have to disconnect this connector down here as well. So just squeeze it like this and it'll come off. And this is the main plug-in that goes to the snowblower engine and back up to the switch. So what I've done here, guys, is I've tilted the machine up like this. It's just going to be easier to show you guys where all the connectors are. Now, normally this cover will be on, and this would be the first thing I would recommend to remove are the two torque screws, they're T20. Take them off, the bottom cover will come off. The other screw is still stuck in the plastic part here. So once you get the screws and the bottom part off, pull on the old switch, and I'll just remove this screw here. Now, before installing the switch, remove the plastic nut that's on it. And now what you want to do is insert the switch right in there, in this position. And now what you want to do is immediately put on the plastic nut. 
And I'll just snug up the plastic nut with these channel lock pliers. You don't need to have it too tight. Now the next part you want to install is the bottom cover that goes underneath the switch. So the cover will go in this position here. It's going to slide right in the grommet here on the wiring harness. Then you want to kind of line it all up here. The next thing you want to do is get those two screws in there and tighten them up evenly. Now what I'm going to do is run the harness in behind here where the old one was. So it's going to be a bit tight. And you want to run all the connectors behind there as well. And it probably looks like a huge mess of wires here on camera. But if you're doing this at home, it's not too hard to do, guys. Okay, so here's the old wiring harness. I've got the new one here. So the first thing I'm going to do is connect the connector here, right down here, and bolt the ground wire back on the engine. So I'll just get this first plug here connected, and I'm going to bolt on the ground wire. So now what I'm going to do, guys, is disconnect one plug-in at a time, match up the correct plug-in on the new harness, and go like that from plug to plug. That way I'm not gonna get confused as to where, which plug went where. So I'm gonna start with this plug here, the blue and green wire. Disconnect that. Now I've got the one from the new harness. And again, these plugs only go in one way. Now I'm going to disconnect the one with the orange and red wire. Now I've got the exact same plug from the new harness and I'm just going to plug that one in. And by the way, there's another tie wrap holding the harness here. Now I'm going to disconnect the two wires that are hooked on to the light bulb. And I've got the wires from the new harness just handy here. So the one that's not covered goes at the bottom plug here or terminal. And this one goes on the top terminal. And here's a close look at that. And I'm going to disconnect the one with the orange and black wire here. On the other end, it's two blacks. So this plug again only fits one way. Just like the other plug, if you try to put it in the opposite way, it just doesn't go in. Now let's disconnect this one right here. So now we need the brown and yellow connector which is right here. Now I've got two wires that go to a switch. I will unplug this one here and plug in the exact same wire that went there. It's the one with the white streak in it or the white line. And now the other one. And now let's get that one in there. And now it looks like I've got everything disconnected and reconnected. So I'm just going to pull the old harness out of here. Now when you pull the old harness out, you want to make sure you don't grab or catch on the other wires in there. And there we go, here's the old harness. So again, this little switch here was the culprit. What I'm going to do is put the machine down, start it up. First, I'm gonna put all the tie wraps to hold the wires together, and then we're gonna test it out to make sure everything works. First, what I'm going to do is just tuck in the wires so it looks clean. I will put another tie wrap here to hold the harness, just like it was held there before. And I'll put a few more tie wraps just to hold the harness on the handlebars here. And another one down here. Now what I like to do is snip off the ends of the tie wraps just so that everything looks cleaner. Now I'll just do a quick check to make sure all the connections are good. No loose wires. This is all nice and tight. The harness is nice and secured. All right, so now I've got the harness all installed. I'm gonna start up the machine and make sure everything works.
so I'm glad that's all it was. It was pretty easy to fix as you saw guys. Again, just follow my instructions, unplug one plugin at a time and plug in the plug from the new harness right away. Then you know that way there's no room for making errors. And I'm also glad that it wasn't the motor up in the console that controls the movement of the chute because that would have been a lot more expensive. And also remember guys, you can opt for the cheaper repair, which is just basically putting a knob like I showed you at the beginning of the video. That's a much quicker repair. It's a lot cheaper. The cons from that is that you will have to stop your machine to adjust your tilt if you want to change the direction. Whereas if you do the repair I did today, your machine will be back like new and you can keep using the thumb switch to move the chute. So whatever repair you do, you're going to be back in business. And again, if this video has helped you guys, please hit the like button and subscribe. Also make sure you're following me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you guys have a great day.